one of the most important things to realize with Blender into Gold Source is scaling. Uh, you always want things to be a certain size, and the easiest way to do that is over here on your scene, turn it into metric, and turn the scale to 0 0.01. And what this does is it essentially maps one centimeter to one hammer unit, and it makes it a lot easier to make things. So um, one meter would be 100 units, etc., etc. Um, so I'm going to make a quick box, a 64 by 64 box, and put a pre-made texture on it just to show you guys um, how easy it is to really get scale right. And um, it took me a little while to figure out. So cursor to center, and I'm going to um, add a mesh, make it a cube. Uh, radius of the cube is going to be 32 centimeters. Uh, radius, double that to diameter of a cube. I don't know why they do that, but that's going to be 64 units. Uh, we can see this by going into orthographic mode with 5 on the keypad, keypad, and then hit 1 on the keypad to change it into front view mode. And um, we can see our grid scale up in the top left, so this is 10 centimeters. Um, so if you zoom out, you can see this grid is in meters, and one meter is 100 units, and that's about 6.4 of a meter, so you can see that's, that's right. So I'm going to make a crate that is 64 by 64 units. Just for ha ha's, I'm going to fit it. Going to drop a cycler sprite. C strike models box reference. And there we go. Yep. Give that a compile and we can see. 64 by 64 box. Of course, not clipped, but yeah. So I'm not sure if a lot of you have a lot of experience with Blender, but a quick note on UV unwrapping. Um, it's the basis of UV unwrapping is marking seams, and then you unwrap it, and then you modify in the UV image editor over here where those seams are going to be laid out on an image file. So we have our basic can here, just an extruded cylinder, tapered edges, and then an inset top. Um, go into edge select mode, and I'm going to pretty much seam out this top, seam out the bottom, and then I'm going to draw one seam up on the side. So I'm going to do a edge loop. So it selected all the edges around the side. And you can see this is already, these are the generic uh, UVs that are given to any model. But we want to we wanna reconfigure that. So you go Control E, Mark Seam. And then you can see it has a red border around it. I want to do the same thing to the bottom. Control E, grab the edge loops. Control E, Mark Seam. Right. And now we want to grab this from the top, bottom to the top. And if you want to just grab this whole thing, you select the bottom, you hold control, and then you select the top, and it'll automatically get everything in between there. Again, control E, mark the seam. And now we have all the seams we need. I'm going to smooth shade the outside. It's already smooth shaded, so let me just reset that for you. So we need to smooth shade this can. 
So go into face mode, select everything, and then deselect the top and the bottom because those two are going to be flat sheeted. Control F for face, shade smooth. So now it's all smooth. So we have our seams, we have our can smooth shaded, and now we can unwrap. So select everything again, mesh, UV unwrap, and just do a standard unwrap. But there's different ways, different modes of selection actually in the UV editor. If you don't know how to get there, let's just say if you're just in this view, up in the top right of the corner there's this little, I don't know, triangle thing. If you drag it down, it'll create another window from the top. If you drag it to the left, it'll create a window on the right. And then down here is how you select your window type. Come in here, go to UV Image Editor. And wherever your mouse is, that's the active window. So you can go Control A to select everything, or over here, Control A to select everything. So I like working with island selection mode. It's very handy. You just kind of right click on anything and it selects kind of the individual islands. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to fast forward through this. But just get your vertex mode and you hold control and you can drag a lasso box. Hit W, align Y and it'll straighten everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all these vertices. Now I'm going to align them vertically, or left and right, horizontally, and that's in the X direction. So same same thing, lasso, align X. So now that I have everything aligned, I'm going to maximize my space for the top and the bottom of the can. Going back into island mode, just grabbing it and scaling it making sure it fits pretty much within the UV. So, now if you want to export this, go to UV, Export UV Layout. I'm going to put it into my source export. I'm going to call it canuv.png and export. So now we can open up paint.net and open that can UV export. So you can see this is the same exact thing that's open over there. Right, so this is a quick and dirty soda can texture. Not very realistic, but this will give you the kind of basic idea of what we're looking at. I'm going to delete this, collapse everything down, save it as can text 01 as a PNG. In Blender, down here we can open a file so we can look in our S source export can text 01. Takes a little while to load. But here it is. And now in our viewport, change everything to texture mode. And we can see we have a soda can. So texture. I have a real texture made. And it's a bitmap. And that is in. Jellyfish can, can that bitmap. And you can see um, when you import a bitmap, the colors get a little funky. This is actually a blue bitmap, but it comes in orange in Blender for some reason. 